Hi everybody, my name is Rainer. Welcome to my channel, Rainier Books. Um, today I want to talk about the Dublin Literary Award, which is uh, being presented on Thursday. The winner of the Dublin Literary Award in 2020 is presented, being presented on Thursday. So what the Dublin Literary Award is about and which books are on the shortlist of 10 titles that will make the winner on where one of them will make the winner on Thursday. So what is the Dublin Literary Award about? Why is it in place? And what makes it so different from other awards like the Booker Prize, like the National Book Award, like the Scotia Bangala Prize? There's a huge difference. The Dublin Literary Award is premiered every year by the city of Dublin. It's actually the highest prize in the world, apart from the Nobel Prize, which gives millions of Swedish crowns and hundreds of thousands of euros. But the Dublin Literary Award gives you a 100,000 euros, which is a lot of money. The National Book Award in the United States, for example, gives you 10,000 American dollars. And the Booker Prize in England gives you 50,000 British pounds, which is, I think, maybe around 60,000 euros. The Scotiabank Giller Prize in Canada gives you 50,000 Canadian dollars, which is in euros 32,300 euros. So the Dublin Literary Award, actually, with its 100,000 euros, is like almost two bookers. It is like uh, almost three Scotiabank Giller Prizes, and it's like five National Book Awards, right, in terms of money. Uh, so it's a very highly respected and very important award because, as you might know, and as you probably know, lots of authors who write beautiful books can't live of, of writing books, just of writing books, you know. Uh, they have to do other things. So 100,000 euros, that is quite a sum for, for example, the last year's winner, Emily Ruskovich from the United States. In 2019, Emily Roscovich won the Dublin Literary Award and the 100,000 euros for her novel Idaho that I'm reading right now. I put it a little bit on halt. I make a break because I'm reading and buddy reading uh, The Great Offshore Grounds by Vanessa Veselka. But Idaho is the winner, the title holder, so to speak, of the Dublin Literary Award. And who is giving the Dublin Literary Award? Well, well, this year, the Dublin Literary Award, like every year, the Dublin Literary Award will be given by, presented by the Lord Mayor of the City of Dublin in Ireland. And the Lord Mayor of City, Lord Mayor of the City of Dublin in Ireland is currently Hazel Chu. Hazel Chu was, I think, the fifth or sixth woman, no, she's the ninth woman to be mayor of Dublin, which is the first person of color. And Hazel Chu will, on Thursday this week, present the winner of the Dublin Literary Award in 2020 and the 100,000 euros. And here are the nominees. Let's get started. Actually, one thing before we start with a long list, with a short list of which consists of 10 novels, one thing that's very important, which books are eligible to win the 2020 Dublin Literary Award? And here we are at a problem because books published two years ago, in the year of 2018, more or less, were eligible for the award. And this is always criticism against or about the award because some people, some critics say, when those books are two years old that, that win the prize and everybody knows them more or less in the bookish world. That might be true. But this award is not being handed out from a jury of writers or literary peop literature people who work at uh, uh, publishing houses or as critics or whatever. They, this award is given by the libraries of the world. The libraries of the world can nominate books for the Dublin Literary Award and they are also forming the jury to give the Dublin Literary Award. So this is, a, this is the very special thing about the award. Another special thing is that we have 10 novels on the shortlist. The only rule is they have to be published two years ago and they have to be published in English. But it can also be works in translation and we have some works of translation here. So now let's get started. It's time, isn't it? The first book nominated for the shortlist 
of the uh, Dublin Literary Award in 2020 is Pet Barker, The Silence of the Girls. Pet Barker is a 77-year-old British-English author. I think she lives in London. She has already won, among many awards, the Booker Prize. And The Silence of the Girls is a novel with a classical setting. It's in the ancient Greece, the ancient Greece city of Troy. It has withstood a decade under siege of the powerful Greek army, which continues to wage bloody war over a stolen woman, Helen. In the Greek camp, another woman, Briseis, watches and waits for the war's outcome. She was queen of one of Troy's neighboring kingdoms until Achilles, Greece's greatest warrior, sacked her city and murdered her husband and brothers. Briseis becomes Achilles' concubine, a price of battle and must adjust quickly in order to survive a radically different life as one of the many conquered women who serve the Greek army. This is uh, The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker that was published in September of 2018. And this was already a Women's Prize nominee of 2019, The Silence of the Girls. And here we come to the criticism uh, about or against the prize, the Dublin Literary Award, that many of those books have been um, nominated or awarded, maybe even before. The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. We continue on our little journey through the Dublin Literary Award. The second title on the shortlist of the International Dublin Literary Award is Milkman by Anna Burns. And this is actually the winner of the Booker Prize in 2018. I It's one of the books that I did not finish in the course of the last years because I really couldn't do this. I'm sorry. Um, Milkman is about uh, a time about a city, probably in Northern Ireland, uh, during the so-called Troubles, during the very hard and dark times that, that there were in Northern Ireland, in a city, and this is about gossip and hearsay, about silence and deliberate deafness, the story of inaction with enormous consequences. And all the characters have no names. Uh, they have, uh, and I think the whole book is written, uh, yes, exactly, it's almost written um, like... This, you know, without many paragraphs, without chapters, and it's just one piece, and I couldn't do it. But it's, of course, a Booker Prize winner, so take this very seriously. When I ever unhaul books, I will put this book on my unhaul list. That was the second title on the shortlist of the um, um, Dublin Literary Award. The third book is called Disoriental by Negar... Diavadi, and this is translated from the French by Tina Cover, and was published by Europa, by Europe, Europa Editions. And uh, Disoriental by Negat Javadi. This book has won prizes as well. It has won the Prix du Style, the Prix de la Porte Dorée. Uh, it was uh, the best debut novel, and it has also won the Prix du Roman News, or to, du Roman, Roman News, whatever. It, this is pronounced, I'm sorry, if I butchered it. Uh, this is, uh, let me read the, the blurb from the um, publisher. Kimia Sadr fled Iran at the age of 10 in the company of her mother and sister to join her father in France. Now 25 with a new life and the prospect of a child, Kimia is inundated by her own memories and the stories of her ancestors, which reach her in unstoppable, uncontainable waves. In the waiting room of a Parisian fertility clinic, generations of flamboyant Sadras return to her, including her formidable great-grandfather, Montazim Molk, with his harem of 52 wives and her parents, Dario and Sarah, stalwart opponents of each regime that battles them, that befalls them. In this high-spirited, kaleidoscopic story, key moments of Iranian history, politics and culture punctuate stories of family, drama and triumph. Yet it is Kimia herself, punk rock aficionado, storyteller extraordinary, a Sherazadi of our time, and above all, a modern woman divided between family traditions and her own disorientalization, who forms the heart of this best-selling and beloved novel, Disoriental by Negar Javadi. Number four uh, on the list is a novel that Many of you probably have read. I haven't read it, I have to admit. It is from Canada, Washington Black by Easy Idugian, published by Serpent's Tale Limited, HarperCollins Canada, and Alfred A. 
K. Knopf. Since I haven't read it, I read the summary of the publisher. Washington Black is an 11-year-old field slave who knows no other life than the Barbados sugar plantation where he was born. When his master's eccentric brother chooses him to be his manservant, Wash is terrified of the cruelties he's certain await him. Christopher Wilde, but Christopher Wilde or Pitch is a naturalist, explorer, scientist, inventor, and abolitionist. He initiates Wash into a world where a flying machine can carry a man across the sky where two people separated by an impossible divide might begin to see each other as humans, and where a boy born in chains can embrace a life of dignity and meaning. But when a man is killed and a bounty is placed on Wash's head, Titch abandons everything to save him. What follows is their flight along the eastern coast of America, and finally to a remote outpost in the Arctic, where Wash, left on his own, must invent another new life, one which will propel him further across the globe. From the sultry cane fields of the Caribbean to the frozen far north, Washington Black tells a story of friendship and betrayal, love and redemption of a world destroyed and made whole again, and asks the question, what is true freedom? The next novel nominated... Well, wait, I have to do this. The next novel nominated for the Dublin Literary Award on the shortlist is also a winner, a very famous book, An American Marriage by Tayari Jones, published by Algonquin Books. In Anna Burns and her Milkman, we have a winner of the National Book Award. In uh, Tayari Jones, An American Marriage, we have the winner of the Women's Prize in 2019 competing against this. Newlyweds Celestial and Roy are the embodiment of both the American dream and the New South. He is a young executive and she is artist on the brink of an exciting career. They are settling into the routine of their life together when they are ripped apart by circumstances neither could have imagined. Roy is arrested and sentenced to 12 years for a crime Celestial knows he did not commit. Though fiercely independent, Celestial finds herself bereft and unmoored, taking comfort in Andre, her childhood friend and best man at their wedding. As Roy's time in prison passes, she is unable to hold on to the love that has been her center. After five years, Roy's conviction is suddenly overturned and he returns to Atlanta, ready to resume their life together. This stirring love story is a deeply insightful look into the hearts and minds of three people who are at once bound and separated by forces beyond their control. An American Marriage is a masterpiece of storytelling, an intimate look into the souls of people who must reckon with the past while moving forward with hope and pain into the future. That was published by Algonquin Books already in February of 2018, American Marriage by Tayari Jones that was nominated for lots of awards, like the National Book Award for Fiction, the Orwell Prize, the nominee for Political Fiction, uh, the Audio Award nominee for Audio Book of the Year, the Los Angeles Times Book Prize nominee for Fiction, and it actually won, as I told you in the beginning, uh, the Women's Prize for Fiction in 2019. It's competing for the Dublin Literary Award. The next book on the list comes from uh, Friends, and it's called uh, History of Violence by Edouard Louis, translated from the French by Lauren Stein and published by Harville Secker. History of Violence by Edouard Louis, the French title is Histoire de la Violence, uh, is a book of a very young author. It's, a, it's an autobiographical book. Uh, Edouard Louis is 28 years old. And in this book, he's writing about events that happened in 1992. When, no, not in 1992. He's, in this book, he's talking about events that happened in 2012 when he was uh, on the streets of Paris, on Christmas Eve in Paris, he was raped and almost murdered by a man he had just met. The ex this act of violence left Louis shattered. Its aftermath made him a stranger to himself and sent him back to the village, the family and the past he had sworn to leave behind. A bestseller in France, Histoire de la Violence, is a short non-fiction novel in the tradition of Truman Capote's In Cold Blood, but with the victim as its subject. Moving seamlessly and hypnotically between past and present, between Louis's voice and the voice of an imagined narrator, Histoire de la Violence, or History of Violence, has the exactness of a police report and the searching, unflinching curiosity of memoir at its best. 
It records not only the casual racism and homophobia of French society, but also their subtle effects on lovers, brothers and sisters, husbands and wives. It represents a great step forward for a young writer whose acuity, skill and depth are unmatched by any novelist of his generation, in French or in English, says the publisher. Histoire de la violence by Edouard Louis. The next book is another winner. It has the book that has won the National Book Award of 2018. This is Sigrid Nunas's novel The Friend, published by Virago Press Limited. And this is about a young woman. This is about a woman in the United States who loses a huge, I think, her best friend. And it um, the best friend has a dog, a, a large dog. And she is taking over that dog and taking care of the dog. And that's the friend. But uh, this book is sort of a... Um, this is about losing, about grief, about losing someone who's very close to you and about coping with it and about going on and having memories of that person. The Friend by Sigrid Nunes, the winner of the National Book Award in 2018, is nominated for the Dublin Literary Award in 2020. The next book I'm happy that I can say I've read. It also comes from the United States and I've already I even met the author or could exchange some pleasantries with him, some some nice things. He, this is uh, There There by Tommy Orange, nominated for the 2020 Dublin Literary Award. There There by Tommy Orange. And this is a novel, a powerful, super powerful novel written by... Um, I don't know, uh, told from the perspective of, I think, at least 15 different people of um, Native Americans who are telling their stories, their life stories, who, who are um, gathering at a powwow in Oakland in California at the end of the book. And the title comes actually from uh, something that Gertrude Stein, who was also from Oakland, California, has written about. This is... Native American literature at its best, and, and, and modern American literature, Native American literature at its best. There, there by Tommy Orange. Highly recommend it. If you haven't read it, do so. Um, we can go further with the next book. That is from India. The, the author is from India. And the book is called All the Lives We Never Lived by Anuradha Roy, published by McLehose Press and Atla Books. Anuradha Roy is one of the greatest living Indian authors, uh, has been nominated for the Man Booker Prize, uh, has written a book called Sleeping on Jupiter, um, has written a sweeping and poignant novel set in India during World War II and the present day about a son's quest to uncover the truth about his mother. Freedom of a different kind is in the air across India. The fight against British rule is reaching a critical turn. The Nazis have come to power in Germany. At this point of crisis, two strangers arrive in Gayatri's town, opening up to her the vision of other possible lives. What took Mishkin's mother from India and Dutch held Bali in the 1930s, ripping a knife through his comfortingly familiar universe? Excavating the roots of the world in which he was abandoned, Mishkin comes to understand the connection between the anguish at home and a war-torn universe overtaken by patriotism. Evocative and moving, this mesmerizing exploration of the darker consequences of freedom, love and loyalty is an astonishing display of Roy's literary prowess, wrote Publishers Weekly about this uh, novel that's nominated for the um, Double Literary Award. All the Lives We Never Lived. The final title is also a winner already now, before, even if it wins the Dublin Literary Award or not. This is Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Nobel Literature Prize winner Olga Tokarczuk from Poland, translated from the Polish by Antonia Lloyd Joan. What is this about? In a remote Polish village, Janina devotes the dark winter days to studying astrology, translating the poetry of William Blake and taking care of the summer homes of wealthy Warsaw residents. Her reputation as a crank and a recluse is amplified by her not-so-secret preference for the company of animals over humans. Then a neighbor, Bigfoot, turns up dead. Soon other bodies are discovered in increasingly strange circumstances. 
a suspicion mount. Yanina insert herself into the investigation, certain that she knows who done it. If only anyone would pay her mind. A deeply satisfying thriller, come fairy tale, drive your plow over the bones of the dead is a provocative exploration of the marky borderland between sanity and madness, justice and tradition, autonomy and fate. Whom do we deem sane? It asks who is worthy of a voice. Olga Tokarczuk, the Nobel Literature winner of 2018 with um, her novel Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead. So these are the 10 nominees for the uh, shortlist of the Dublin Literary Award. As you can see, as you can, uh, as you have learned, many of them have already won literary awards in France, in the USA, in the United Kingdom. So who's going to win? I cannot predict that. It's impossible to predict awards, but I would very much wish, I would very much wish that novels that may have not won the big awards yet could win this prize, like Emily Ruskovich did two years ago with Idaho. So, dear jury of the Double Entry Award, if you hear this, how about this one? There, there by Tommy Orange would be a great winner of this prize. Maybe it won't win the prize because it has already. The, the prize has gone to the United States two years ago. Another great winner, a uh, book that is very interesting to me is, although it's probably very hard to read, is Histoire de la Violence, The History of Violence by Edward Lewis. That's also something that is interesting me. Even Disoriental, I thought, was interesting about the history of Iran. And um, An American Marriage is something that I have to uh, take from my backlist to read, actually. Um, maybe one of these, or Washington Black by Idu Idujin. What do you think? Who's going to win the Dublin Literary Award in 2020? Have you read any of those books? Which one is definitely the best? Tell me. Tell all of us what do you think. Thank you very much for watching this video. On Thursday, you can see the Dublin Literary Award. You can even go on their website. I'll link it down below. You can go on the website of the Dublin Literary Award and can buy a virtual ticket to... Um, talks with the authors of uh, who are nominated and to the actual ceremony on Thursday when the prize is being handed over by the mayor, Lord Mayor of Dublin. Thank you very much for watching this. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet because there will be more videos coming out soon and you don't want to miss any one of them, do you? Thanks for all the returning subscribers from for all my friends on Booktube that I've won over the last five months. This is really a great place to be and I really appreciate the people that I have met uh, and that I will meet in the future, hopefully, on this medium. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.